We are very excited to bring you this last Australian episode where we're going to explore the Cairns area but also prep for our next passage. Within the next few weeks, we'll be crossing over to the Solomon Island. So we're trying to do a few longer coastal cruising between 16 hours and over a day uh, to give us the opportunity to see what it's like to sail for a long time. So how we handle food, um, sleep and how not to get bored, for example. We are doing an all day sailing. So we are bored. So when we are bored, we try to find stuff to do. And guess what Jan thought would be fun to do today? He gave us a challenge, which is you have to do a thousand reps of bodyweight exercises, like 1,000. 1,000. Like, what the hell? A little challenge. I think it's good to challenge yourself. I just can't let you go. Lord knows that I've tried to. You said I was the only one No one likes being lied to You made this mess and left me with the pieces now 500 halfway through It's always good to mix up the hands placement Just need another quarter and I'm done. Yeah! One thousand! I did it! Good job! Exhausted, but I did it! Your stupid challenge <laughs> completed. How much more? Five. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. You're done. <sighs> One thousand! Good job, babe! Stupid challenge! Hi <laughs> right, guys, I've got two very good news. First one, we've finished that stupid challenge. So now I can just enjoy and relax. Second one is that we've been sailing with the spinnaker all day. And when you say spinnaker, it means we're going faster than expected. Yay! So we did our plan uh, looking into average speed of five knots, but we've been doing way more than that. So it turns out we'll be arriving in about two hours. So that's a very good news. Yay! This journey was taking us somewhere between Cairns and Port Douglas for some fun on sea and land. But before that, we had to anchor and tie the boat to the mangrove. So this is what we need to do. We need to park the way they have. So tie some uh, lines onto the mangrove so that we don't swing in the channel. Um, and that's going to be our first time. So challenge! what we've got for the day but thankfully we have that because the road a mess and you may have some history but we don't have to repeat it we drive an hour and a half from Cairn because apparently there's beautiful waterfalls I can hear them from here so let's check them out I'm gonna burn all the bridges between us
That was super fun. Next up, the Dentry Forest. Say hi to the cassowaries. These guys are vital for the rainforest. The seeds from the rainforest fruits have a 4% chance of germinating, which will in turn create another tree. But if the fruit has been digested by the cassowaries, it turns into a 97% chance. Another fun fact, it's actually the male that incubates the eggs and then raise the chicks. So if you attack a chick, you will have to deal with the dad. Since we are on land, uh, we're going to take this as an opportunity to prep for the next part of the trip. The plan is to go to the Solomon Island and we'll probably do a stopover in the Louise Yard. There's a lot of uh, like remote villages that don't have access to a lot. And when white people come over, they call them Dim Dims, <laughs> um, they like to do some trades. So stuff that they don't have access to um, and they can trade all of these things for like fresh fish, vegetables, fruits, etc. We are on land, so we're gonna uh, get around and buy all of these things so that we can stock the boats and also a few things that we might need for the passage itself. But yeah, let's go. We stopped by this shop, which is a, a professional communication shop. And what we're trying to do is buy a satellite phone or see what options do we have um, just to be able to get the weather during the crossing. All right, let's go. That's what I see there. So I probably would go with something like this. It also has SOS integrated into it. But it is a, there is a weather forecast app that goes into that. Oh, it is being So that is actually linked with that. Yeah. Okay. Just to summarize, we had a few uh, options when it comes to communication while at sea. So the first one would have been to get an uh, HF radio um, and that is because we already have the antenna on the boat, we just need the receptor. So this is what we were going for initially, but it turns out that even just the receptor is like three to four thousand um, Australian dollars, which is a lot more than what we wanted to spend, so that's not an option for us. Then we started looking at satellite phones and satellite communication in general. So you've got a few brands that do satellite communications, but from everything that we've been researching, every sailor in the world seems to be using the Iridium uh, technology. And then when you're looking at uh, Iridium, there are also a few options. You can get a phone uh, directly, so that means that you can make calls, send text, and maybe in some cases get uh, data. And then there's another option, which is called the Iridium Go, which is basically like a Wi-Fi receptor and then you have to connect your uh, own phone onto it and get um, communication from your own phone. And that seems to be the cheapest option for the device itself. So we thought, okay, let's go for that because then it's easy, we just connect our phone and we get data and we can do whatever we want. But, turns out, you also need a SIM, obviously, and the data is a lot more expensive than text and calls. So, yes, the device is less expensive, but then if you end up spending more money in communication itself, I'm not sure it's the best option. So, we looked around, we talked to a few people, um, and ended up still getting the Iridium Go. Like, um, and the only reason is because even though data is more expensive, uh, the Iridium Go connects directly to Predict Wind, which is the app that we are using for uh, weather forecast. Uh, so that's just easy peasy. And also there's quite a few apps that do connect through the Iridium Go, like WhatsApp, for example. So it turns out you might not need 
that much data in order to send text or make calls. Uh, so that could be the good option. So once we've settled onto the eVGM Go, you have to pick a plan to use it. So buy a SIM card, pick a plan. And from that, there's quite a lot of options. You can buy like prepaid SIM cards that would have a certain number of megabytes of data or minutes of calls or text, etc. But they all have an expiry date. Um, so it would be good for like one month, three months, etc. And because we don't really know where we are going after Solomon Island. I mean, we have a rough idea, but not that good of an idea. And, you know, if you're going to use it for four days and then not use it, like having an expiry date is really annoying. So what we ended up getting is um, this. So this is a SIM card and it's actually a postpaid SIM card. So it means that you're only paying for what you consumed. Uh, it's probably a bit more expensive than a prepaid SIM card because, you know, that's the deal. But at least we're only paying for what we spend and there's no expiry date. So that's the option for us. So yeah, we just need to get all of that settled and then connect a predict wind onto it and we'll get weather forecast on the go. Yay! So what are we up to now? So now we are going into a discount shop because we want to buy a lot of things uh, that we can use in the Solomon Island and in the Louisiana. We're looking for anything that the locals might need and they don't really have. So anything for the kids, uh, cleaning products, fishing lines, all that sort of things that they don't really have access to and that we can bring over to them. So yeah, all right, let's go. a few things that I think the children are going to be able to use and I don't think they have much access to this sort of thing so we're going to get a lot of these things that they can have fun with but also maybe learn so there's like activity books and stuff like this so I think that's what we're going to get for the kids um, let's try and get many things Look at this, they can share as well. I don't think it will share much. <laughs> and then let's focus on like activity books and try and find things that they can learn with. Looks like games. It does, but you can learn and have fun at the same time, can't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Also get some stuff for washing the uh, uh, clothes, and if they don't use it, we'll definitely use it ourselves. So that won't go to waste for sure. Um, there's two different scents, so I'll get the two. Well, you think you're gonna have fun with this? Are they gonna have fun with this, or are you gonna have fun with this? Maybe both. Yeah. I'm <laughs> pretty sure. Them. Yeah. <laughs> In the next shop, we bought clothes for children, but also some fishing equipment. The final shop we visited was to get some clothes, clothes and a bit more clothes. Look at everything I'm getting. So many stuff for little boys, little girls. I mean, I'm sure they're going to be so happy to get stuff like this. And mostly they're going to get stuff that are new, which is really important because I don't think they get access to a lot of these things. But yeah, so we're getting a different size, different shapes for boys, for girls. All right, this is what it looks like. This is everything that we got. So we'll let you know in a future video if there's anything that we thought was missing, if we didn't bring enough, if we bring too much, uh, anything that we didn't use or we thought, oh shit, we didn't bring that. We'll let you know how it pans out. Okay, now we are almost ready to go, but before we do that, let's explore the reef one more time. Lord knows that I've tried to. You said I was the only one. No one likes being like too. 
It's the last evening before we go, uh, before we leave for the passage and I'm getting quite busy because I'm trying to make um, food for the entire time where we're going to be crossing. Uh, mostly because when you are crossing you don't really want to come uh, down below and be in the kitchen and cook. So I'm trying to prepare everything in advance so that as we are sailing we, just we can just grab something and eat. So I haven't made any full meal, but I've made options um, for everything so that we can mix and match. So there's sorts of uh, proteins, carbs and vegetables everywhere. And I have enough roughly for four days. So meat, um, veggies, pasta, the sweet potato wraps. Uh, we've got some bread as well, um, beans, etc, etc. And then for snacking, uh, we've got bars and stuff like this. But I've also made um, eggs, so boiled eggs. Because it's a very good source of protein and actually a good source of fat as well. And that's going to keep us uh, fuller for longer. So that's a really good option. So I'm checking one last time for the weather. Doesn't look too good, but it's the best window we're having so far. The waves are going to increase quite heavily on Sunday. So we're hoping we're going to make good progress and be there before the big waves. A bit scary, but that's life. All right, it's our best window, so let's hope we can make the best of it. And uh, if you like the video, uh, please like and subscribe. And see you on the next episode.